Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2001, it's a Ford Crown Vic with a 4.6 liter engine. You get in the vehicle, turn the key, and it, it doesn't do anything. It just, you could you can hear a faint click uh, underneath the hood, but that's about it. So I'm going to show you how to diagnose what the problem is and then how to go about repairing it. Uh, this customer here actually thought that his problem was the battery was no good, so he already put a new battery in it. So we are going to bypass the uh, checking of the battery because uh, it's brand new and it does the exact same thing. So we know that the battery is not the culprit. Um, so let's get in there. I'll show you what it does and then how we're going to diagnose and how we're going to get this job done and out the door. Hopefully today. It's about 3.15, so we'll see how it goes. So, all right, let me show you what it does and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, so this is what it's doing. I hope you can hear that. Now the first thing you would normally do, if you have a car that doesn't start like that, the first thing you would do is take a look at your interior light. Now if you turn the key and that interior light goes out, then we know we have a problem with the battery or the cable or something like that. So let's try it and see. You don't see any change in that at all. So we know that the uh, cables are not the issue and we know that the battery is not the issue. All right, so let's go up underneath the hood and uh, we're gonna continue up there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do now, there's a couple things you can do. You, if you have a test light, use a test light. If you don't have a test light, I, I always use the power probe because you can actually check power and ground at the same time. So we're gonna connect these up to the uh, battery itself and then we're going to go down underneath the car, down by the starter motor, while my assistant tries to start it. We're going to see if we have power to the, to the main lead, and also if we have power to the start wire when my assistant tries to start the car. If we have power, and we have ground, and we have power to the start wire and it's not starting, the start is no good. If we don't have power to the start wire, then we know that there's a problem with the, uh, with the starter switch or the or relay or, or whatever. Um, a, a common problem with these starters too is the, the wire that leads from the back of the starter from the, uh, the main lead coming in. You have the power lead that comes into the uh, to the top of the solenoid and there's a little jumper wire that goes from the solenoid down into the starter itself. Those wires for some reason corrode and they rot off and you know it's an issue right there. But let's take a look at it. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, so let's lift it up and uh, we'll continue. But let's connect our power probe up first. nice about power probe is they actually have a light in there too so you can see a little bit. All right let's lift it up and uh, we'll continue up underneath the bottom. Okay this is going to be a little bit tough to film in here because it's such a tight quarters but I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do and then you're going to watch me do it. This lead here is the main lead coming down from the from the uh, battery. We need to check to see if we have power at that lead right there. This lead here is the start side of the starter that's like a little 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. We have to check when the key is turned to the start position, we need to see if we have power to that wire right there. If we have power here, and we have power here in the start position, then we know that the starter is no good. So, uh, all right, so that's what we're going to do now. What I'm going to do is this cover. This is actually the original starter in this car. So we're just going to get this cover off of here. Don't lose it because we're going to put this back on. And you can see already, see how it's oxidized? Remember I was telling you about that wire up there? Let's see what that looks like. Okay. It doesn't matter because the start is no good anyway, but you see that wire right there? See all that oxidation on there? Those wires frequently break off, and uh, that's the problem right there. So, all right, let's check power and ground first and uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, I'm going to set you up on a tripod and we'll see how you can see it. Alright, I'm going to give it a try. We'll see how you can, you can see. Remember what I told you, this wire here is the main lead. So if there's power here, then we know that, the, uh, that it has power to the starter, which it does. It's got power there. See? You have power there. All right, now this is the start wire. We should have negative. 
through here. Let me just get on it. Okay, you can see we have negative right here. It's actually, it's, uh, um, it's green. Green means that there's negative in there. And when it's, when it's um, energized and you try to start it, it should turn red just like that. All right, so. Okay, up there. All right, try it once. Try it again. Okay. Okay, thank you. Turn the key off. Okay, as you can see, it has power and it has ground. This starter is no good. Um, once we take this out, I'll show you what I mean about that wire up there. It's going to be, it's actually, it looks like it's actually burnt. See that? Oh yeah, it's broken. There it is. Yeah, it looks like it's broken anyway. See? Yeah. That's very common. This wire goes bad all the time. All right. All right, well, we're going to take the starter out now. And the way we're going to take the starter out is, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a bolt here. It's a 10 millimeter here, up there, and then maybe one more 10 millimeter up on top. But before we do anything, we're going to lower this down, and we're going to disconnect the battery. Okay, let me give you an example of what kind of tools you're going to need to complete the job. Uh, these we already used already to, to pop off the cable up on top. The negative cable is disconnected. We're going to use some ratcheting wrenches. It's either going to be 12 or 13 millimeters, the main lead. Um, the small little wire is probably going to be 8 or 10 millimeter. Uh, we have a couple of 10 millimeter sockets and extensions, a couple of swivels, a swivel head ratchet. And of course, I sprayed up everything really good with penetrating oil because you know it's a little bit oxidized underneath there. So, all right, let me just uh, explain to you what I'm going to do, and then we're going to do it. It's going to be a little hard to film this, but you can see I sprayed it up already. I'm going to take out that bolt right there. I'm going to take out another bolt up on top right there, and I think there's a third one up on top as well that I may have to come in from in the front of the vehicle up this way here. Take it in there, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to disconnect that lead right there. Uh, that's either 12 or 13 millimeter, and this one right here. We're just going to push these out of the way. Now you can see these are a little bit rusty. If they break off, it's no big deal because they're going to be trash anyway. So, uh, all right, let me uh, let me get started, and I'll try to do the best I can so you can see. All right, first thing we're going to do is going to take off that lead right there. That's the uh, the main power lead. Now remember, we have our battery is disconnected. careful you don't get any rust or anything in your eyes when you're underneath there working. Like I said, if they're going to break, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. If it breaks off, it'll be fine. Alright, I'm going to take our wire off. I'm just going to put that up out of the way for now. We're going to disconnect this wire right here. That's a 10 millimeter. gonna snap. wrong. It didn't snap. It came out. Sure felt like it was gonna. Alright, so we're just gonna take these wires now. We're just gonna relocate them out of the way so that they don't interfere with what we're doing there. Alright, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up that little 10 millimeter. I hope you can see that. I'm not sure. That 10 millimeter right there first we're gonna do. Let's reposition you. 
This one right here, hopefully you can see that. These are usually pretty oxidized. Okay. Alright, that's one. Now the other one up here, we're going to have to get in there with an extension to get, get to it. see it. I'll get it on and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay. Remember those wires. We're just going to get them out of the way again. They have the memory of their own. Alright, let's show you what I'm going to do here. Don't know if you can see that, but you see right up in there, you see the uh, um, the socket and the extension are on it. Now I'm going to loosen it up and we're going to take it off. Okay. Alright, so now we have that one loosened. We're just going to take it out now. Take our, take our ratchet out. Just take our bolt out. And now we're going to take out this one. So we have one more up on top. You're going to have to go by feel to get to. going to come in right through here in the front I'm going to snake a ratchet in through there so I can get to it so uh, all right let me do that and then uh, we'll continue I doubt you're going to be able to see this but I just want to show it to you that's where the ratchet goes in from the back of the starter right there up to that other bolt which is up here which you have to go by feel like I said I don't think you're going to be able to see it but that's how I'm going to get it out Is the third bolt. As you can see the starter still doesn't come out, it's rusted in place. That's where this comes in handy, right here. Like that. And I'll just take it. Okay. All right. Remember we talked about that wire, that phrase all the time. Look at this. It's not all the way through. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. It is all the way through. There it is. That's the wire that's actually broken. And the power comes through the solenoid here. The start side energizes the solenoid to bring power down to here. The power comes through here, right there, and then down into the into the starter motor. And that's what happened to it. So, all right, let me uh, make a phone call. We'll get the starter and uh, we'll continue. Okay, I just got the starter motor. I just want to show this to you. You see it? You see how? See how this is broken? Look at this one. Look at how thick that is. Okay. So it, this is very common. It happens a lot. All right, but um, that's it. Oh, and, and it didn't matter if that other wire broke off anyway because I got to cut it and I got to splice it together or use the heat shrink tubing on it so that we don't have any issues with the with the start wire they must have run into a problem with it so they supply a start wire 
and we're going to snip the old one and we're going to um, crimp it in here and then we'll heat shrink that tubing. Okay, so now we're going to take our starter motor. We are going to take it and stick it back up into the opening right here. We're going to do this stuff here later on. But for now, we're just going to get it up into the opening here. Right, we're just going to leave it sit there for one second. And now we're going to catch each one of the three bolts loosely by hand. You can see that I have never seize on there or anti seize, whatever you want to call it, because it's actually going to make it go in a little bit easier because the, uh, the trans we're screwing into is a little bit oxidized. The main thing is you have to catch them loosely. You can't tighten them in tight yet. If you tighten them tight, then you're going to wind up with it being cocked slightly and you're not going to be able to get it in properly. So we're going to catch all three. And if you just wiggle the starter up and down at the same time, let's see, get you a little better light there. If you just wiggle the starter up and down, you can actually get it to the bolts to catch a little bit easier. Right, now we have the two of them caught. Now the top one is going to be a little bit tighter, so we're going to be uh, a little more careful with that one. Okay, I just want to point this out to you too. Now, you, that bolt up on the top, you can't see it. So now you're going to take your, your, uh, your socket like this, and you're going to take your bolt like this, and you're going to try to get up there. But you can see the bolt is loose. If you have a magnetic socket, great. If you don't, just take a small piece of paper like that, go over the top of the bolt, and then you put your bolt in like that, and you can see that bolt doesn't fall out. So it makes it a little bit easier so you don't drop it up on the top of the starter and have to play around to, to get it out. So we're going to put your left hand up to find where the hole is located. And then we're going to bring the bolt over and in and rock the starter. Okay, now we have all three of them caught. I'm going to tighten up the top one first to get it in there as far as I can before I tighten up the other two. Okay. All right, all three bolts are now tight. We're going to reconnect our other leads on here. Let me reposition you so you can see what I'm going to do. Right here, we're going to tighten on the main lead first, just like that. We're going to catch that on by hand. Now, this one here, you want to be careful and not tighten it too tight, because if you tighten it too tight, you can break the stud. So we're just going to snug it down a little bit and then just go a little bit more. And I was holding the wire up on my hand up here just so it doesn't rotate. Let me see if I get it. Okay, I just hold this wire right here while I tighten that bolt just so it doesn't rotate. Now this, we are going to cut this and splice it together. So let me get my cutting pliers and we'll do that. Alright, so we're all going to snip this end right here like that. We're going to strip back our wires a little bit. And you can strip it back in any way you want to. I'm just going to cut the tape off. Like that. Exposes a wire. We are going to cut that rubber stuff off.
Right, so you have a good exposed piece of wire right here now. And you're going to take it and twist it like that. Put it in here like this. Make sure it goes in all the way. And then we're going to take our crimpers and we're going to crimp that wire in place. Just like that. Make sure it's a good tight connection. And then we're going to get our heat gun. We're going to heat this up a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to use something else. I'm just going to heat this with a cigarette lighter versus using a heat gun. I'm in a hurry to get this done. It's now 7.30. And we open up at 7.30, so I want to get my doors open here. And you can see the heat shrink tubing shrinks down and causes a good seal on it, so that's it. All right, so let's just go over what we did. And then we're going to open up. And then once we open up, we'll come back in and we'll put the battery back on and get it started. Okay, so we made sure that all three of our bolts here are tight. We connect it on our main lead right here, and we make sure the main lead is not touching anywhere up inside here. This is our new start wire. It's crimped and, and uh, heat shrink back together, and that's it. So let's lower it down, connect the battery up, and start it up. Okay, now that we got it back down on the ground, we're gonna reconnect our battery cable. Remember, it's always a good idea to disconnect the negative cable versus the positive cable. Now, as I told you, this battery is brand new, so if you had any oxidation at this point, you would want to clean it up. But as you can see, this one here is in good, good condition. I'm just going to tighten it up. Okay. Now we did our job correctly, this should start right up. Let's fire it up. Okay. All right, come on up, let's talk for a second. All right, so that's it. Let's turn this off as well. Okay. I love these lights. These things take a beating and beautiful. Made by OTC, OTC Spectrum Lights. Um, all right, that's it. You're all set. All right, this job is finished out the door, and it's not even 8 o'clock. It's about quarter to 8 right now. So uh, this one's out. Next one's in. So uh, we'll see what today holds for us and what I can film. All right, remember, if you get in the car, you turn the key and you have nothing at all, no, no crank whatsoever. You want to definitely do a couple of things checking it before. This guy went and bought a battery. He probably, he probably paid 150 bucks for a battery. That was nothing wrong with it. Um, I don't know how much he paid for it, but I'm just speculating. Um, so before you change anything, check it out thoroughly first. Get yourself a test light. Get yourself a power probe. Get yourself a voltmeter. Check the voltage on the battery first. Remember what I told you about the interior light? You turn the key on, you try to crank it, the interior light stays bright and it does not go dim. That means that you have a good connection on the battery and you also have a fairly decent battery. Um, and again, you'll check it with the voltmeter just to confirm that. Um, if you turn the key and the interior light goes out or turns almost totally dead, if it's almost totally dead, your battery is probably no good. Uh, or you have an, uh, an issue with the wiring by the battery itself or a bad connection or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, if that does happen, then you'll need to do a little more checking to see what's going on with that. And then just follow the procedure I showed you for diagnosing the starter with the test light or the power probe. And you will need an assistant to actually help you from, uh, from the inside of the car to check to check right here that start wire. Remember, if you have power here and you have power here when you turn the key to the on position to start it then you know that the starter itself is no good sometimes when you have a bad starter 
I don't have a hammer in front of me right here, but you can, if sometimes we have a bad starter, you can have someone to hold the key in the car in the on position and tap the starter here lightly, and sometimes you can get it to start. In this case, you could tap it all you want, it's not going to make any difference. That positive lead right here was rotted right off, and that was the issue with this starter. Power here, but it would not transmit the power into the starter itself. All right, so that's it. Out the door and on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.